Okay. We're okay on time, so let's uh, carry on. New machines, new installations, and all of this is all great. At the end of the day, we need machines, materials, installations. Uh, can somebody close the microphone on the left from the two Johns? Because we can still hear what they're saying to each other. So they need to be turned off, those microphones. We, uh, I go to lots of different companies. I go and visit them. And, and I've, I go to see a little workshop. And I, uh, let's suppose it's called Jose Maria Workshop. And they said to me, OK, you talk a lot about technologies in Technica, but what I need in my company are nice people, kind people. And what, what do you mean by nice people, kind people, friendly people? And he explained in his own words, he said to me, look, we need people that are enthusiastic. We need people that have an entrepreneurial spirit, that are hardworking, that are excited about working. And I know that in Technica they've worked on that, because in Technica there's a, this is a field part of our work. So I'm going to ask Agustin if, maybe it's only going to be Agustin, I don't know. He, he, this guy spoke to me about nice people, enthusiastic people. What do they mean by that when company managers say that to us? And Jorge spoke about high performance cycles. What is this? What are we talking about? Well, to start, I'm not from Bilbao, so that's just, you need to know that. So high performance only comes from Bilbao. So we're going to have to define high performance better. Yesterday and today, we spoke about new technologies and all sorts of changes. But at the end of the day, our concern is how can we prepare people for change? How can we make them ready for change so that they can live and experience and use these new technologies? And I'd like to make take use of this moment, especially as the majority of you are teachers. I'd like to project now a video just to show you uh, a few things. So let's have a look at this video. Today I'm going to see another company. For us, like as teachers, it's important to hear firsthand what teachers want, what they want from our, our students. Well, in our company, we want independent people, responsible people, adaptable, creative, proactive, innovative, and tolerant. And they need to know how to work as part of a team and adapt to new environments. They also need to be able to express themselves well and understand other languages. They also need to be respectful of the environment. That's also very important for us. And of course, we want them to be able to be able to work in difficult environments and solve uh, problems and, and be enthusiastic about their work. Well, you know, a nice person. That's what I mean, a nice person. We want people tolerant autonomous, responsible, that are enthusiastic about their work, adaptable, creative, proactive, innovative, that know how to adapt to new surroundings and responsible. You know, a nice guy, that's what we want, a nice person, nice, nice, nice. Iñaki was a lot younger at that, for the, in that video, but you've got an idea of, of what's going on. I don't know if you've felt reflected in that situation. This was obviously just a mock-up, a, a sketch. But let's just see what leading companies um, want from their cutting-edge uh, employees. What do they mean by nice? And we're going to show another video today. And in this case, it's a video in which Alicia Gomez is going to talk to us. She's a company manager. Today, in our company, technical skills are something that we take as a given. So what we want are soft skills. That is attitudes. What do we mean? by the soft skills. Well, we want enthusiastic people, people who have a strong values, trust-based values. We work a lot as teams, 
So this ability to work as part of a team is very important. Also, effective communication, to be able to work with other people. And something else that we're very interested in are entrepreneurial people. I don't mean that we want them to set up new companies, but rather we want them within our company to understand all the improvements that are out there. This proactive attitude, trying to pinpoint improvements and change what's bad, especially as we w exist in a world in which everything is changing and everything goes very fast. We need these kind of people. So these enthusiastic people are key to the success inside companies. So maybe one could say that it's not so much your qualifications that we're going to be impressed by, but rather the value you can add to our company. That's a pretty clear message, isn't it? The truth is that uh, this is by no means anything new. Unfortunately, we've spent several years now working on all of this. And so we think it's a good idea on this occasion now to ask the opinion of Jose Antonio Marina. I think you know about him and another a couple of other world, people from the world of teaching. It just went on my to see what they have to say about this change. I would have liked to explain to people why I'm so enthusiastic about what the Basque Country's VET system is doing. Everybody that works in the Basque VET system have made me discover something that I feel is fascinating, intelligent enthusiasm as a skill for problem resolving. This means that their concern about being at the cutting edge of learning, at the cutting edge of social needs is there. Professional recycling is going to be continuous needing from now on, a continuous need from now on. And I want to congratulate all of you that are working in this project. And I want to encourage all of you people at this conference to attach value uh, f f to it and learn as much as I've learned from them. For us, the biggest change that this has brought about is, is the ability to encourage our, our students to want to learn. And we've done that by encouraging our students to build the machine themselves. And they have to finish it, whether they want to or not. And they're always prepared to stay late to finish the project. And this means that teachers have to work hard, because every day, every class is a surprise. And we will never know how to solve all of this. And as a learning process, students have to find other ways for solving problems. And thanks to this new teaching learning methodology, what's very important is both enthusiasm and uh, dedication. What does this methodology provide me with? Well, knowledge, because at the end of the day, I work with different groups, we share ideas, we create debates, and I understand that that is uh, vital to improve personally and to de design changes. And do in doing so, we continually work using creativity. Our students are happy to come to class to study because they can see that they're taking part in their own learning process. This motivates them a lot. Of course, we have difficulties. We come across difficulties. But once people are on the right path, uh, once they see that they can get results, I um, definitely would never go back to the traditional way of teaching. So I think these are just witnesses which explain the road that's being followed. And although there's a slide up there that you've probably uh, all seen before, I'm not going to explain it now because it would take a long time. And I think you'll have that opportunity this afternoon when we'll work on this more closely. But what I would like to highlight here is some of the keys which 
have led us to these spectacular results because, as already been said, we've spent over five years using this methodology. So now we've got a certain amount of experience. And here are some of the things that are being done so that this is gradually filtering down into the whole of the system. And I say the whole system because the system's vision for everybody in VET is very important. So there's something that's vital here, which is um, working as a network, but a collaborative network. We use this word collaborative time and time again, and it forms a part of our model. But the best way of putting collaboration in to practice is actually the other way around. Sorry, the best way of making uh, what we do credible is putting into practice. So our network uh, way of working is supported by these different pillars that are in the graph. And the first are expert people or people with experience. That is, people that have experience and that are transferring their experience, supporting and tutoring and encouraging other people in other VET schools that have got other kinds of training. Another key person is what we call the learning coordinator. At the end of the day, that's somebody who accepts the responsibility of their school together with the management team to drive this methodological change forward. And then, of course, the main stars in all of this cascade process are the teachers who are doing a tremendous amount of work because this is a very profound change. It requires a lot of personal work for at least two, three years until things become a little bit more stable. So I think it's the best time now to say thanks to all the teachers, at least from our Technita team, for all the work that's being done. So I'd like to say thanks from the Technica team to all the teachers in our system and, unfortunately, outside our system uh, who we're working with. So thanks. Thanks to Lanbide. Thank you very much to all of you, to you teachers. Thank you. Thank you for t turning us into students. Thanks for your support, for your ideas. Thanks for your patience, for being so daring for having received us so well, for trusting us, for getting involved, for jumping in at the deep end, for always being there. Thanks for being committed. Thank you. So thank you very much of, from our side, really, from the bottom of our hearts, because it's truly a fantastic work that we're all doing together. But we ought to also ask the teachers what they think about all this, because it's easy to say that this is all great work, but maybe they should tell us how they're experiencing this change. So we're going to now hear the opinion of two teachers. Well, the way I work as a teacher now is completely different. Sometimes I have to, I go into the classroom, I have time to explain things, or I have to encourage people to work. But my work as a teacher has changed. I've lost the fear of losing control of the classroom. That leads to a bit of uncertainty, and initially you're not used to it, and you feel a bit like maybe you've not taught them anything, that maybe you're not doing things properly. But actually, after time, you realize that students actually learn those skills, they learn the criteria that you feel that they should have, because actually students learn by doing. As that time goes on, you feel more relaxed and you realize that this kind of methodology is worthwhile. And uh, Yana, as you're here, what do you have to say? For us, this is a very positive experience, truly. Our students when they leave the school are technically trained. But in addition to that, they get those cross-cutting skills that companies are working, f asking for. Companies uh, have accepted this uh, methodological change with open arms. And as a teacher, although there have been problems in, in recent years, the results now we consider positive, And we'd never go back in time to the previous way of doing things. So why would we do that? Why would we go back in time? Well, you're going to be able to do it. Okay. 
we've got to teach us now, but we need to also remember that the true stars are our students. I mean, what's the point of doing all of this if it's not to train our students as best as people or our learners as best as people? Let's hear what they have to say. For me, what was really complicated was to get used to learning based on challenges, challenge-based learning or project-based learning. But now I'm a bit more used to controlling my time. Otherwise, if you lose everything to the, la to the last minute, you can't do it. But what's more, this model makes it possible from right from the word go, you're working as part of a group. You can see how uh, c working in collaboration, you get good results and you can deal with challenges. And Marian, you're here. So say us firsthand. What do you want to say? I'm going to say it in Spanish. Well, I've spent several, uh, I'd been working for several years and I thought I'd, I'd actually really like to go back and study. But initially I thought it was really difficult because you didn't have this typical teacher student uh, situation. And I was going to study physiotherapy, so that's got nothing to do with robots. But thanks to teachers and teamwork with all my colleagues, you end up working these cross-cutting skills such as communicating with others, explaining how you feel and innovate. And what's even more important is you also uh, learn a lot of knowledge because you, you become very demanding on yourself. Okay, and to end, I'd like to talk about the future. What about the future? I think yesterday, somebody said quite clearly, I think Jorge explained it very clearly, what the future is going to be like, but a couple of comments about the future. We're going to have to carry on working as a collaborative network because that's where our greatest strength lies. If we don't have that, we will never progress. And also, we need to um, make what we've already done so far something normal and carry on trying new things and with all the resources that we need to carry on developing. That's all I wanted to say. And I will be seeing you this afternoon and we'll be able to tell you all about this in more detail this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Agustin.